Diane Abbott is a bit of a trailblazer. She's the first black female politician elected to the House of Commons. Uh, she's also the Shadow Home Secretary. She'll be a very prominent figure if there was a future Labour government. But she also receives more abuse than any female politician in the country. So we're just going to go upstairs here and chat to her about that, but also about the B word, Brexit, and if an election's coming, can Labour win it? Lovely to be in your wonderful, cosy office at such a quiet time in British politics. I'm interested in just, you know, there are people watching this, some of them born in the 90s, which is horrifying. This is still a very racist and sexist society, but what was it like at a, in 1987, under Tory rule, being the first black so female politician elected? Labour, Diane Abbott becomes Britain's first black woman MP. It was extraordinary being elected for the first time. Um, obviously, during the actual election campaign, I got bricks through my constituency office window, and we got our first share of you know letters in green ink but the the main thing was when we entered upon the first time even other labor mps were slightly amazed people of all colors of all creeds who came together to put hackney in the history books tonight yeah. well, within the labor party at the time the old establishment was very resistant to the struggle for representation of black voices and minority voices. What was it like, that struggle, you had to fight within your own party? There was a lot of resistance from people who considered themselves progressive to the idea of black representation. I think some of the people around Neil Kinnock thought it was like tantamount to black power and, and really very scary. Um, and I remember having dinner in the members' dining room with someone very senior in Neil Kinnock's um, Shadow Cabinet, who came up to me, it was me and Keith Vaz actually, and he went into this long anecdote about how there was a boy, in, there was a black boy in his school, and he was called Chalky White. Now this was meant to be an, a friendly overture, and it was extraordinary. Bizarre. The abuse that you've been subjected to, a lot of that is soaked in racism and misogyny. Do you want to just give an idea, just a sense of what that kind of abuse is and... and, and... Well, you know, I've got, I've got someone working for me and she mm. says, people often say to her, what's it like working for Diane Abbott? And she says, I never thought I'd have to read the word nigger so often. And it's really awful for my staff, actually, because they're the ones that come in, turn on the computer, there's all these abusive emails, they go on Twitter. I mean, they are the kind of first line of, of defence against this stuff. And, the, and I had never spoken out about it. I've been in Parliament for every 30 years, never spoken about a about racist abuse at all. But my staff said, you have to. I've had death threats, I've had rape threats, described as a pathetic, useless, fat, black piece of shit, ugly, fat, black bitch, and nigger. Nigger over and over again. And what was the response like when you spoke out about it? Well, we got more and more intense racist abuse. That was the thing. I mean, these people were not shamed at all. It was worse. But I think some people were a little bit shocked. Because unless you're at the receiving end of that type of abuse, you know, as a black person, as a woman, as LGBT, you don't really understand what it is. And it's what it's meant to do is to undermine you personally. It's meant to get at you personally. And it's meant to make you feel that you're not a legitimate political actor. Have you ever felt personally under threat because of some of those rules? Until the death of Joe Cox, I didn't feel under threat. I used to say, oh, it'll never happen. But when Joe Cox died, then, you know, I did start to feel personally under threat. And, you know, I've had young women, young BAME women come to work here, work experience and so on, and they were shocked by what they saw and what they read, and it put some of them off, off the idea of going into politics at all, which is very sad. It's horrifying. I mean, in terms of some of the double standards, which are clearly racist and sexist, and just as a striking example, I want to put this to you. My colleague, my brilliant colleague Gary Young, wrote a piece suggesting that if Boris Johnson had been a black woman, mm. how would he have been treated? I mean, how, do you look at that and think that's just a striking example of the double standards applied in, in politics? Is that a vote? Yeah. Is it running mm. Sorry, I've that's got all right. That's all right. Yeah, do that. I'd... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello again. Hello again. Hi. Interesting vote. Yes, they're all interesting. They're always fascinating. <laughs> Parliamentary democracy in action. What do you think about that, those double standards? Well, the thing about Boris Johnson and people like Boris Johnson is they are seen as legitimate political actors. It is assumed that people like him, people that look like him, 
run the country. In fact, you might argue the only thing Boris Johnson really believes in is that people like him should run the country, where it's not assumed that people like me should run the country. The question time notorious incident now. Currently, we're kind of, in the polls overall, we're kind of level pegging. We went Six into, points behind. We yeah, went, you're behind, Diane. Yeah, but we went into <laughs> the last... How would you sum up what happened there? I think they went too far. I believe that if we could make up 20 points in the last general election, I believe we could win any forthcoming general election. Well, you need to have a general election, and you're not, you've, you've, you've tried and you've failed so I far. I don't think hope I'm, is a strategy, Diana. I want we all thought having a woman as the new chair would be great, but Fiona Bruce in the warm-up said things to the audience about my private life which were extraordinary, quite extraordinary, since 2019. And you all see things to define a woman by her private life. I've never had that kind of really vitriolic response from an audience. Now, it's now about, is it, now. There's no point in harking back to what was months ago. It's about if you just let and also it. Is there going to be an election, do you think? Do you know, I don't know. There's never been a point, I've been in Parliament for 30 years, there's never been a point where I had less idea about what's going to happen. Theresa May's a gambler. She has bad luck, but she's a gambler. She gambled on the general election last time, and this time, general election may be the only card she has left to play. Do you think Labour would win it and, and what would be the route to victory? I think we'll win it. We went into the last general election 20 points behind and a lot of people, they thought we'd get crushed mm -hmm. and the left would never recover. Actually, we made up almost the entire 20 points and I believe if the election had gone on for a week longer, we could have won. I mean, there's real things that are affecting people in the here and now in their communities and we have to be able to, to pivot and talk about that and that is what Jeremy wants to do. Very, very lastly, very quickly, if there are maybe young black people watching this, maybe young women, young black women who want to become a politician and maybe they're scared of the abuse they will get, the attacks they will get. What would you say to them? The first thing I would say to any young person, whatever colour, who wants to go into politics, that I, I want to see what people really care about and what they do in their community and so on. You just can't become a politician because you fancy going on news night mm -hmm. in, no. in a nice suit, right? And then, yes, I have had some abuse. Um, but I've also had fantastic support, um, and that's it. And, and it's because I, I believe in what I'm doing. It's because the things I care about, you know, social justice, fighting racism, I've cared about them all my life. And it's my belief in the things I'm fighting for and the support I've got that has carried me through. That's brilliant. Cheers, Dan. Really appreciate it. I think there's a lot of really interesting stuff there about the double standards, about racism, uh, about sexism, about the way the mainstream media talks about politics in this country. And I think it shows how political culture really does have to change. Now I want to hear your thoughts about who else I should speak to, uh, from Tim Martin to Diane Abbott. Can't say we're not diverse and eclectic with the people we talk to. I want to hear your ideas. We've got loads of videos, so do click on them. Click on the interviews we've already done. As ever, subscribe. I'll see you next time.